Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at the scroll viewer and WPF and what that really means, right? What what kind of circumstance would have to come along for us to want to use this? Um, just before we get started, I seem to do this at the beginning of any video now. I just want to remind you guys, if you like this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're up to 15. Um, so up four in the last 28 days. I thought as I consistently make videos, hopefully this reaches more and more audience, and it seems like that's slowly the case. Um, so, like I said, if you enjoy this, and if you're gaining value, and if you just want to see you know, how these go in the future, don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate it. Anyway, today we're going to uh, look at the scroll viewer. So last time we talked about creating another window, aside from our main window right here. Um, I think I called it info in my... A general idea was maybe we have in our main window, it doesn't have to be the main window, it could be any window, but maybe we have like a button that says view more info, right? We have a lot of applications that have like a little help section or something like that. So I thought um, if we can make something like that in a real world case where if the user hits the help button, then an info uh, an info window would appear over the main window so they can read, you know, hey, this this field does or refers to this, this button does this, etc. Whatever, you know, you could feel that would be useful for your user. But today we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to go back to our main window um, and we're going to look at a scroll viewer. So you might wonder what a scroll viewer really is and it, it kind of it kind of is what it sounds like. It's a way to put things in a in a container, in a viewer, and it allows the user to scroll. So, for instance, our height of our desktop application is 450 pixels. And let's say, you know, we want to put more into this area of the application than what the height of the main window permits. Right. It can permit whatever you want. Um, I guess it's all dependent on how big of a display your user has. Uh, for me, it's it's a 1080p display, so was it like 1920 by 1080? Um, but sometimes, you know, you don't want to assume that all of your users have the same one. So you make you make a a, a default height, and you know you want to add more into this window than what uh, what it can truly hold. And the way you can do that is with a scroll viewer. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and let's minimize the stack panel. Let's create a scroll viewer and when we do so, it's going to give us a squiggly because now we have two um, like parent content set. So we only want one, so I'm just going to cut and paste what we made so far and put that in a scroll viewer. And really what I'm going to do is so we have a scroll viewer, and we have a stack panel, and then we have a, an, another stack panel. Um, in this stack panel, I am just going to create a label, uh, and I'm going to make its height, um, let's make it 120, and its content is going to say, this is another label. Maybe not 120, that seems a little drastic. Let's just do 80. Um, and let's go ahead and make the uh, text. So I think it's called, uh, what is it? Text, no, it's font size, sorry. I, I was, my bl brain was going blank uh, there for a second. Let's do it at 50, what's that look like? Cool. Um, so let's go ahead and just copy this. Whoops, accidentally hit X, which cuts it. Uh, let's go ahead and copy it. So I don't have to highlight everything. I can just put the cursor on that line and hit Control C and then Control V. And we're going to place multiple of these in here. As you can see by our preview here, we have content that goes all the way down here. Um, but our window only supports this area right here, right? That's the that's the height that we set it. However, now that it's in the scroll viewer, you can see what that does. So let's go ahead and run that. I got some coffee as usual. Okay, and now you can see on the very right, uh, hopefully you can see it, um, there's, this, there's this scroll bar now, 
right? And I can use my mouse wheel to go up and down, and I can go throughout the uh, the content that we have in the XAML. And if I didn't have this, if I just had a stack panel, um, you wouldn't be able to view this unless you were to enlarge this, and somehow, you know, if it's larger than the height of your display, pixel-wise, um, I'm not really sure what you would do to get around that. Maybe you can, you can push it past the height of your display, but then you're going to have a hard time hitting this X, right? Unless you go down here and you hover over it. It's, it's just a big mess, and that's not something that we want a user to go through, right? I think that's pretty apparent. No one would like an application that uh, wouldn't have an option like this, but it has a lot of content and that they would have to kind of finagle away in order to see that content. Um, so this really adds a lot of value with the amount of real estate that you have in your console application. So another thing that you can do, um, so I use a scroll wheel every time, but maybe there are people out there that actually use this. This is predefined, this how many pixels it goes down uh, with every click. And what you can actually do is a little something neat. So let's go back to the XAML. We can go to stack panel. I think it's something like can, let's put, it's something with content. Uh, no, it's not in the stack panel. I'm sorry, it's in the scroll viewer. That's why I'm not seeing it. It's like can content scroll. And we're going to set that to true. What that'll do, now that we run this, every time we hit this, it just goes to the next one. You can't tell because they don't say anything different. They all say the same thing. So let's go ahead and change that up a little bit. This is another label one. Let's go to two. I probably only have to do this for the first, I don't know, eight or so. Sorry, this is kind of tedious, but welcome to coding. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to programming. All right, sometimes it's just that way. All right, that should be enough. Whoops, let's put space there. Um, let's go ahead and run this now. So you, now I have something different in each line so you can tell. Now that we go down, notice how we don't just skip a few pixels, we just skip a whole entire label. So now we go through that and we're able to do it this way. All right? Pretty awesome. Um, and since it has a parent container, these labels of a a uh, a stack panel that's that enables it. It allows this to hold true. So it it Im implements an interface which uh, allows you to enable this, and it actually runs as you would expect. It can go uh, down one line per click with this. Like I said, I'm not one for that. I'm one for uh, just using my mouse wheel. So it's the same thing, right? If I put my mouse wheel down a few, um, it'll just snap to whichever one, however you have your velocity of your mouse wheel set, or whatever you call that. Um, so it kind of snaps to the last or the next label. So that's something neat you can do with a scroll viewer as well. Anyway, uh, there's not much really else to talk about scroll viewers. I think it's just a good way to make a very usable user interface with possibly a limited uh, real estate, as I mentioned before. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you. And um, I'll keep pushing out these WPF videos. I love, I love WPF. And uh, there's plenty more I have to learn. And as I learn with it, I'll share it with you guys. But um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.